I also think it's important to design your project to your team and your team's skill sets. And not make a multiplayer game if you've never made a multiplayer game. Or not make a 3D game if you're a 2D artist. You just make a 2D game. Those are cool too. Are you a part of a small development team? How about a two-person development team? Well, you're in luck. Today's video features game development tips from the devs of Creature in the Well. Creative directors Adam Volker and Bo Sayer started with a prototype featuring two-player air hockey with characters, and 18 months later, Creature in the Well was born. We dropped by Flight School Studios' booth at PAX West and were lucky enough to have a quick chat with Adam. We asked Adam for tips for working with a small team. We talked about pivoting and also asked him for some advice for new devs. Let's dive in. We are Ask Game Dev, and this is two-person game dev team tips with Creature in the Wells, Adam Volker. Welcome back. We make videos on how to elevate your game development and inspire others. If after watching this video you want to continue the game dev conversation, check the video description for a link to our Discord server. My name is Adam Volker. I am a creative director at Flight School Studio. We made Creature in the Well. And I did most of the art on the project. So Creature in the Well is a top-down adventure hack and slash pinball game, or a pin brawler, if you will. Um, you play as Botsy, who is the last robot of a robot, ancient robot collective, who have all been destroyed by somebody who may or may not live in a well, who may or may not be a spooky creature. Um, the point of the game is to turn on this ancient weather machine that you built when you hundreds of years ago. To, to get rid of a sandstorm that's parked itself over the town of Mirage. So the people of Mirage have lived in the eye of the storm for so long that they don't know if oceans are real or forests or anything else, and you're there to save them from that. So I actually ended up working in film because in 2008 I was working at Midway Home Entertainment, the guys who make Mortal Kombat, and they went bankrupt. And so I needed a job. And I ended up in uh, Louisiana at a short film company called Moonbot Studios. Uh, the first project we made won an Academy Award in 2012. It's called The Fantastic Flying Books of Mr. Morris Lesmore. And then since then we made like, ended up making a bunch of advertisements and iPhone apps and other things like that. Um, and I found that like the visual design of film and the storytelling of film has uh, the ability to translate to games, but it's naive to think that it's done the same way. Um, the productions of film and game are very, very different. One is linear, like it's called waterfall, like top to bottom. And games is very cyclical. You you iterate on your idea. So a lot less translated than I thought. But um, if you learn like the right visual language, you can translate that to any medium, I believe. Yeah, huge Mike Mignola fan. And that's what I base the art on, Hellboy, PPRD, and all that stuff. Actually, Flight School's uh, marketing director was tweeting at him the other day, like, Adam based his style on your art and I was like freaking out and I was like hopefully he doesn't see that. I've never met him, I heard he's really nice actually. If he like gave it a like. Yeah, he, like, uh, that would be a huge deal for me. Everybody works differently. I think like just knowing how you work is important to getting things done. Shipping is a skill that you should develop. <laughs> Bo and I get along really well. We're very, very candid with each other and we're very um, honest. I'll show Bo some drawings and he's like, I don't like that, I don't like that, you can change that. And then he, he allows me to like decide what feedback I want to take and not. Um, but he's happy to give it and vice versa. That trust in, in like each other's taste is important. And then, um, you know, just making sure that we're always speaking our mind. I think you have to underscope what you make. The process of development is additive. So if you start with trying to achieve the smallest thing possible, you will get there and then you can make things, you can add to it. But it's much more difficult if the minimum viable product of your game has to include a bunch of features. That makes it much more difficult to do. I also think it's important to design your project to your team and your team's skill sets. And not make a multiplayer game if you've never made a multiplayer game. Or not make a 3D game if you're a 2D artist. You just make a 2D game. Those are cool too. I mean, that's what development is. It's just, it's just testing stuff. So like you're like, maybe this will work. And then you make it and then everyone's like, ah, I hate it. And you're like, great. I'll do it 
they'll do a different thing, you know? We originally were making the game as a roguelike, and I think that was a mistake. We did it because we were trying to extend the life of the content of what we could make, as because we were a small development team. It also took some of the value out of it. And when we decided to make the dungeons by hand, uh, it allowed players to like map them, which was, was, was much more fun. Um, it allowed them to find the secrets and remember where they were, and it allowed us to balance the difficulty curve with a lot more detail. The two-part mechanic took us a long time to find, but was very, very important. The game risked becoming solvable because you could like hit a ball into a room and then let the ball do all the work for you. Finding a way to have the fun of multi-ball, but like not let that win the game for the player was a huge part of finding, I don't say this like a mistake, but was a very, very important thing to make the game successful. We would rather make the right decision for the product than release something we didn't really feel good about. And so it's, you, you take a really deep breath and you change gears, you know? That's all you can do. It's always player feedback. So there's this incredible space in Montreal called Gameplay Space where indies work and they also monthly host monthly play tests. You can just let them know you'd like to bring your game and they let you come. So we brought like really early stuff and showed it to players and then just talked through it with people. It's it's really the best way to find out like you like this, people don't like this, and then you just adapt as you go and do it as often as you can. Sometimes it's just Bo and I playing each other's work and then we get to a point where we feel like we're ready to share with friends and family, you know, friends in the development scene, send them an early, early, early build and then we get like PDFs back of like screen caps and feedback and the story is confusing or I don't like this art here or like I think you need more moments like this and that's it's just really helpful like I don't think creating in a vacuum is super healthy so just having the right group of people around you to help you get your game done is really important. <laughs> Underscope your game. <laughs> I think ideas are easy to come by and I think you should prototype what you're making and then let that decide whether your idea has legs or not. Thanks again to Adam Volker and Flight School Studio for taking the time to speak with us while running an extremely busy booth. Creature in the Well is available now on Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and Steam. Visit creatureinthewell.com for store links. For more Ask Game Dev, check out this video on Art Direction and this playlist of our game developer interviews.